President Cyril Ramaphosa will today announce the new head of the National Prosecuting Authority. Earlier, ENCA reporter Aldrin Sampier spoke to political analyst from the University of South Africa, Professor Dirk Kotze, on the matter. Let's quickly bring in the Professor of Political Science from UNISA, Dirk Kotze. Thank you so much for joining us um, this afternoon, Professor. Firstly, looking at the deadline that was set, the 19-day deadline, and then the interviews happening over a period of three days, and within a couple of days, actually just the day after, the names were there, the five nominees were there. So there's, you get that sense of urgency, and today we have an announcement even before the 90-day deadline lapses. Yes, that is indeed so, but I think because it's a judgment by the Constitutional Court, there's actually no choice for the president. Um, he has to keep to, to the deadline. Um, and I think he wanted also to set a really good precedent by saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to work within the, the parameters set by the, by the court, and I want to also play along with what the court has in mind, which means also that the way in which the nominations took place, the, 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 the so-called selection committee, um, the way, because that was the first that it happened. Uh, that all sets a, a new precedent, I would say, for trying to, to, to secure a sense of independence for the, the person who will be appointed. And I believe transparency will be important here as well because the likes of CASAC, they've been one of those um, civil rights organizations that have been advocating for this, that um, rather have people being interviewed for this position. But then it went a step further. Now that the media was actually allowed to follow these interviews live and the entire Republic knows exactly who was interviewed and um, they probably have their own favorite. Yes, um, first of all I think one should say that that was not the initial idea that the media yeah. should be part of it. It was because of pressure and the uh, court uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, application but I think in the end it was actually very good. Similar to what we are seeing with the Zondo Commission, the fact that it is so much in public I think that creates a sense of transparency, of credibility about the, the outcome in the end. Uh, and it will help President Tramaposa definitely, as well as the new incumbent who is going to be announced today. Do, do both these issues, first of all, the panel, the, in, the panel interviewing these uh, candidates, as well as the media being allowed to follow these proceedings, do you think both these set a precedent that um, even the next president, whoever he wants to appoint, that there will be that expectation? I think so. Uh, we've seen it also with the appointments of how many now boards, you know, the SABC board, the board of ESCOM and others, of how much that it has become a public process. And I think it's, it's, it's simply impossible to turn that around in future. So future presidents will certainly be bound by these presidents that have been established. And some argue that although you may have this whole public process, it does not necessarily mean that you'll get the perfect candidate. Even if you look at what's happening in the U.S., for instance, they face a similar process of where people go through public interviews, but it doesn't mean that this will be the right person for the job. No, certainly. I mean, there's no guarantee about how this person is going to exercise his or her tasks and the decisions that must be taken. But at least in terms of the background of the person, in terms of the, 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 the curriculum vitae of this person, that there has been some checks that have been done. So that the, the president and others, the minister of justice who will be involved, will not be caught unaware in future mm -hmm. about, about skeletons in, the, in their cl uh, closets. Um, but what how they are going to exercise their powers, that's obviously something different. And speaking about those powers and how those powers have been interfered with before, the um, many court cases or court rulings, court judgments have indicated um, the level of um, instability in the NPA uh, to such a point where we've now had um, the Constitutional Court setting aside the appointment of two NDPPs. How important is it for this process to meet constitutional master as well? It's absolutely important. You know, this, this position is one of, of, of a few in the civil service with, with a huge, of a very high turnover. I think there has been eight in national directors since 1998. Um, none of them could have completed their terms. You know, so there's, it, it, it appears as if there's such, this is such a hot potato, it's such a hot seat to sit in because of the political pressures that we've seen from, uh, well, you can mention any one of them, uh, Menzi Zamalani, you can talk about Bulalani Nuka, all of them have been under political pressure. So I think it is, has reached the point now where it's absolutely imperative for the appointment of this position, for someone to be established and to serve you saw her term right towards the end. And Nassan as well. Just a quick one. Um, 
the importance of ensuring that there is stability would also mean that you need the support from within. And I was saying earlier on that at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry, you had Advocate Morfe there, and Advocate Morfe was testifying about um, a period where former President Jacob Zuma had called him and wanted to appoint him NDPP. But then he mentions that he said to the President that what you need is that you need to get someone from within, yes. because that person would need the support. You look at um, Ria Piecha, she didn't get the support. Mm -hmm. You look at uh, Tom Moyani, while he was Commissioner of, um, of, of, of Correctional Services, he didn't also get the support. Yes. How important is this? It's it, absolutely important, and I think that is why the majority of the five candidates have experience um, in the National Prosecuting Authority. This is a position which is not only expected to have a high level of knowledge of the law, but it is a very specific form of applying the law, and that is in the form of being the head of the prosecuting authority. Um, and for that, you need experience. You need experience in how to work with the police, with the walks, uh, with the Department of Justice, with the courts also. Um, and that's not just any person. Plus, within the ranks of the NPA, there must be a sense of credibility, of trust, um, and of accountability. Professor Terkota, thank you so much for your time. Um, and indeed, that's about it. It is about accountability. And one of the suggestions that came through um, during uh, the interviews from one of the candidates in the Northwest was that the NPA should be an independent institution, independent from the executive, that probably takes the shape of a Chapter 9 institution, that that would ensure that there's no political interference. But the focus today is not about um, changing the processes within um, the NPA or changing um, the, the, the state statutes that um, the NPA is founded on, but it is about announcing who will lead the NPA in its current form.